Thanksgiving is a huge part of worship. Number three, uh, I think this is the most important one, is relationship. Relationship is what it's all about. Everybody can relate to relationships. We all have them. We all need them. Some of you be like, man, I don't have any good relationships. You know, my dad's all messed up. My mom is doing her own thing. My uncle or my coach or my teachers are all, you know, living for themselves or whatever it is. You might just be complaining about everybody in your life. I don't have any friends. But think of God as the perfect father. Think of God as the perfect king. You know, we just uh, recently, we elected a new president. And think of God as the perfect president. The Bible says he's king of kings. That means he's king over the kings. But that also means he's president over presidents. Think of God as the perfect leader the perfect coach, and the perfect friend. That's who God is, you know. Um, and one of the other things I think about relationship is that we know it takes time and energy to build relationships. You know, every relationship that you have that you want to, to grow or establish, you invest in. And it's the same with God. So relationships take investments. So that's what worship is. When you worship God through music and singing, you are investing in that relationship. You're telling God, you're awesome. You're amazing. Thank you. And you're telling him how much you love him. And on John, uh, sorry, 1 John 4.19, it kind of sums up to me why we worship God. It says this. It says, we love God because he first loved us. He first he first. You know, it's amazing to think we didn't establish this. He did. He loved us first. And so it's in response to his love that we love him. You know, it's, it's amazing because there's something that happens to you on the inside. It's like a switch flips. And suddenly you realize that God loves you. I mean, it's amazing. Some of you out there are like, man, I don't know. I just don't feel it. But there's something that happens to you when you seek God. And all of a sudden, your heart awakens. It's like a light bulb goes on in your heart. A switch flips or whatever. And you realize, when you really realize how much God loves you, it's unbelievable the feeling that you have and like the, the respect and love that you have for God in response. And when you realize that God loved you in your worst moment, when you were yelling and throwing stuff at your spouse, when you were cussing out somebody who did something wrong to you, or that moment when you were betraying your friend, God loved you in that moment. He loved me in my worst moments. Even when I wasn't seeking Him, even when I didn't care that He even existed, and I turned my back on Him, He loved me and He sent Jesus Christ to die for me. And then there's something that happens when you realize that God didn't have to send Jesus to die for us. You think about it. You think, well, he did, so. Yeah, but God didn't have to. Think about this. If God didn't send Jesus to save us, would he be unjust? Would he be a bad God? I believe that if he had decided not to send a Savior to us, he would have been perfectly just within his rights, we're the ones that turned our backs on him. He didn't turn his back on us. But yet, he could have just said, man, forget it. I'm going to condemn all of you to hell. Like, he would have been perfectly within his rights to do that. But he didn't. And when you just have this revelation in your heart and your mind that he could have rejected you, but he didn't. Even when we rejected him, it blows your mind. It's incredible. And it's in that moment, I think, that you move. And this is important. Listen to this. It's in that moment that you move from, oh, I have to worship God. I have to go to church. I have to read my Bible. I, I have to. I have to. You move from having to do that to wanting to do that. And that's the key. God doesn't want you to have to love him. No relationship ever works where you have to love somebody. It only grows and it's real when you want to. And that's an important fact that we need to know. Think about this. I heard a story about Oprah. And I think I got it on uh, something on YouTube. But uh, 
she basically said something like, you know, when she was younger, she was at church, and she heard a preacher say, God is a jealous God. And she thought, oh, that hit her wrong. It's like, what? God is jealous? Jealous of me? How could God be jealous? I mean, that's not good. I, I mean, I can't serve a God like that. And it, she said it hit her wrong, and from that day on, she walked away from God. So I can't believe in a God like that. Now, there's one thing that she missed. She missed the preposition. God is not jealous of you. He's not jealous of me. He's jealous for you. He's passionate in his desire to have a relationship with you. He's jealous for you. I mean, think about it. In Zephaniah 3.17, it says that God sings over us. I don't even know if you knew that God sings. So once again, he first sang over us that we would sing over him. But then it goes on to say that God rejoices over us with great love. And that word rejoice in the Hebrew literally means to dance. It's a Hebrew dance step that means to spin like a top. Can you fathom God, the creator of the universe, spinning like a top with his love for you and me? Oh my goodness. When you realize that, it'll blow you away. So you have a choice today. Will you worship God? Or will you turn your back? He will never be unfaithful to you. He's, he's waiting there with his arms wide open. And the reason we worship him is because he loved us first. And he didn't turn away. So I encourage you today, seek the Lord. If you're busy, stop. Take a few minutes. Take a bunch of minutes. And just get on your face. Get on your knees in your office. If you haven't done that in a while, if you're a worship leader and you're not worshiping, in your bedroom or in your office, I challenge you today, stop. Seek the Lord. Stop telling other people to worship God and not doing it yourself. Seek Him. And I'm telling you, when you then lead others to worship Him, it'll be so much more amazing. So, thank you for hanging out with me today. And I hope that encourages you to understand why we worship again. I would encourage you to show this to people talk to them, teach people about why it is we worship. I think people should know. All right, God bless you. Have a great day. Unbelievable.